Listen, women are more attractive than dominating women. Oh, hell yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I think even everybody agrees with this one, no? Oh, shit. Not hell everybody. yeah. Listen, my, my shirt says submissive women are sexy. Okay, so. <laughs> yeah, it's true, man. It's true. And look, I, I, I think one of the most beautiful things about love is being able to fully take care of a woman in every way, whether that's emotionally, protecting, providing, everything about that. Like every fairy, fairy tale that was ever written for all of time was about a man saving a woman from a castle and a dragon, right? Mm -hmm. Or some sort of scenario like that. And I think that's absolutely beautiful. And I have nothing against women being empowered, but I do feel like the happiest women in the world are the ones that look up to a man and that he can fight every day to love her and love his kids and his family and provide and be that source of something to actually look up to. Like, I believe a woman can admire a man and it's very, very, very healthy. Am I saying that somebody that doesn't do that is not a man? No, I would never. But ideally, the relationships that are gonna work, the relationships in, let's say, the 30s, 40s, 50s, or, or whenever, you know, we're, we were having nuclear families stay together before we went off the gold standard and inflation pushed everybody to have, two people have to have a job. Yeah, dude, I do. I think those relationships are much happier when the man can lead a house and be proud of going out and going to work every day and fighting for his family. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I think what we have to do is we have to look at general female happiness because that's really what I'm into. Like, I don't really care what guys think or what girls think. I think I have a unique perspective in that I've worked with a lot of high-performing women that operate in this dominant role. And I work with them for the purpose of helping them be able to reintegrate with that more submissive, uh, connected, intuitive part of themselves that really is connected to their bodies that if they were connected to their bodies, wouldn't be as dominant, at least in the presence of men. And with every woman that I've worked with, there is this deep, deep, deep desire, regardless of what she says externally, to submit to the leadership of a man that she knows can properly hold down the emotional space and really put her interest right. at the forefront. Right, because as soon as when a woman is dominant over that man, she can't respect him. It's just impossible. She can't feel safe. Right, exactly. And, and, and the thing is, the thing is with submission is like if you, if you even look at the word submission, sub under a mission. If I have a mission and this woman is under my mission, meaning she is I'm leading her. Right. Then that is a, a actual good relationship that's going to flourish. Truly, deep down, every woman would love nothing more than to be more feminine in a role in a family and, and take on that either that motherly role or that nurturing role or the role that feels supportive to the overall mission of a man. It's just got to be a man worth getting behind and weak men are the reason why this is a problem. Case in point, look at the workplace and you don't see women applying for jobs to be power line guys or hang steel at steel companies. They're not picketing outside of the United States Army being like, why won't you draft me? They don't want that smoke, bro. Like, let's let, and that's okay. Right. And I can't, I can't say enough. It's like, as a man, like, you get to take pride in taking care of a woman, mm. protecting women. What about your daughters, man? You want to protect them, provide, care for them. That's okay. Let them be feminine. A strong man doesn't need you to be a man. He say, fine, you can be a woman. You're safe, sweetheart. You right. come with me. Right. That's it. Um, I like yeah. Justin's take on it. There was just a few things. Uh, I. I actually 100% agree with this particular, uh, the three gentlemen, that respect is a big part, and if a woman doesn't respect you, she doesn't love you. That's a big part. Things that I disagree on, um, I think that in 2023 especially, I think women just want to be able to look to the side and see their partner as an equal. And I think a lot of women now are... I don't think they're trying to be men. I think what they're realizing is that the qualities that they were looking for in men, they've always had it within themselves. If women are submissive, it's mostly for, I, I wanna say like the validation for the man. I think they know in the back of their heads, like they know now that they can do things on their own, but I don't think they necessarily need a man. But I think what they're looking for is that intimacy to have a partner, but I don't think that they require one. Oh, no, they do. Because, uh, you know, uh, a lot of these girls, they usually go home and cry at night from being lonely, from not having a man. They have all these things and then they don't, they're, they're upset they don't have a man. You know what I mean? And I heard you say that, you know, women want to be the man's equal, but you, you don't see, and maybe this could just be a societal thing, that a societal pressure, but you don't see women doing things that could make them equal to the men. You don't see the women approaching the men. You don't see the women paying for the dates. You don't see the women uh, being more assertive to the man. You see what I'm saying? So where is that at? Because they got options. They got so much more options than well, men. I'll tell you what you do see. You see a high level of women on antidepressants more than ever, right? And I think that's a bunch of women trying to cope with trying to be like a man when really, let me ask you a question. 
Are you more attracted to a woman that has a high paying job or to a woman's beauty? That doesn't matter. It does matter. It does matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You, you, you could, but I would like to say a mother figure rather than a woman. Absolutely not. But I would like to say that you're saying that women, you know, have a higher, you know, have antidepressants, but men, um, I'm a social worker, so men, one out of 10, are more likely to experience depression, but more likely to go undiagnosed and not seek therapy or help. So I do think, and women also, you have to consider the fluctuation in hormones, pregnancy, because that can alter, you know, their mental health. So I think that's kind of a moot point, but I feel like, you know, I'm not looking for a mother figure, I'm looking for an equal. So I feel like with... I'm looking for a mother figure. I want someone to raise my kids. An equal... I guess it would be equal to you in the house in a sense, but you still, you're still looking for traits that, that you don't have, that you can't fill yourself. That's the kind of the point of the partner. If, you know, if we're saying that women, you know, they're like going home crying, looking for men. I think it's also that societal pressure that tells you that at the same time, you have to have multiple women. They're telling the women, you have to have that one man, that husband by a certain age, have kids by a certain age, there's more pressure on them than there is men. And for, you know, lack of a better term, I think men have gotten off a lot easier because women have so much pressure um, and they get judged more harshly than men do. If we're talking about back then when men used to go home, bring home the bacon or whatever, you know, the, the domestic violence rate was pretty high during that time. And I'll also say that for people of color, we never really had the luxury of working one job. So my parents, you know, their parents before them, everybody always had to work, men and women. So there was always that equal opportunity for them to be able to see that they could do it together as opposed to put that one pressure. And I also would like... I agree and disagree. Again, my family had a family business. My mom worked her ass off and took care of everything in the household. My dad worked his ass off and took care of everything above the household. They worked very well together. They both worked pretty much the same amount of hours, but guess what? My dad took care of everything behind the scenes that I don't think people realize. He took care of the bills. He took care of, you know, like paperwork or anything that comes in, anything that, that requires anything to be done for school, all that type of stuff. My father handled, my mother did not touch any of that stuff. Right. So there's still a balance and a leader, even though they're equal in when they both work. I'd like to ask if you guys find submissive women more attractive than dominant women, is that because it makes you feel more validated as a man? Or is there something there that you feel like, feeds into your purpose as a man. Yeah, well, it's a balance. If, I, if I'm if i a dominant person, I need a submissive. If, if I meet a dominant woman, we're gonna butt heads. What if that changes? Like, what if she grows? Cause I would I would love everybody to be able to grow throughout life. What if she starts becoming more dominant? Does that, is that like a- Are you saying if she starts becoming more dominant in our relationship? More dominant or equal to your dominant? Oh yeah, she's gone. She's finished, see, we're done. That, see, that's my thing. Like, <laughs> look, I got children. I don't need somebody else to take care of. And I love your thing about, you know, the Prince Charming and everything. But you know what I need? I need a badass woman who can match my badass energy. I work mm. with my wife and I'm going to tell you, I take care of her. She takes care of me and she's badass. And that's what I'm attracted to. I don't need a submissive that I have someone to take care of. And then it's fine. You know, if she goes through that, but then I'll be there and I will take care of her. But I'm not looking for somebody, another child to take care of and have to dominate. and tell, You go over there. This is where we're going to go to dinner. This is we're going to do that. No, that's why what he was saying, I was going to bring that fact up too. A lot of men are depressed because they put it on this shield of I have to be the leader. I have to do this. And you know who goes to get help first? Women. Okay, that, I, that totally makes sense. I think if we're talking about men not ever dealing with their emotions, it makes sense for this argument that you guys are talking about. Mm -hmm. But I'm with the firm believer I've gotten a lot of therapy in my life. I've done a lot of things for myself personally to resolve my own internal conflict. Okay, so it's the job of alpha men. The real integrated alpha man has the capacity to understand what he's feeling, why he's feeling the way that he is, articulate in a way that is productive to the dynamic. So a real man is someone that understands himself deeper at an emotional level, has taken the time to do that so he can show up as a rock, not so he can show up more emotionally. Problem is, is that if you're super emotional, when we talk about the whole thing of being submissive or dominant. And they don't even really talk about the dynamics of trying to get a woman. Right. This the, this part's being skipped here, it's, or at least I don't know if they're going to get to, to there. But B, 
being a beta and being submissive or looking for someone that's more dominant than you, most women out there are not looking for that. That's the problem that their argument is for me, that whatever they're saying isn't how the market dictates it. The market dictates it differently. Yes, I understand he grew up with a family that was raised that way and like had two two parents working and he sees that, oh, they want equals. This is what women want to say. This is what they say all the time. This is not what they truly desire. So this is where us red pillars or people that have taken the red pill in a sense see these blue pill type people. It's like you're going by what women are saying this is not the actions that women actually take it your woman is going to dominate you because you're so emotional emotionally unstable yes. let's say that it's emo let's, let's stop using emotion let's start using emotionally unstable right. since you're so emotionally unstable she's going to dominate you and then she's going to lose respect for you and that's going to teeter to the waters of the relationship so i mean you guys know dominatrix exists for a reason, a reason. <laughs> Um, and by the way, I used to personal train at Dominatrix. You guys are their clients. Um, not me, cowboy. I'm being serious. Like it's a very hidden thing. I used to I used to date them. <laughs> High positions of power, very alpha. But like, here's the thing. I think you guys put a little bit too much pressure on yourselves. It might be a societal thing. I've dated submissive women before. I find them highly annoying. Sometimes I just want somebody to pick a choice. I like her places. She's got better taste than I do when it comes to that kind of stuff. So. Please go ahead. We do butt heads once in a while because she is dominant. But does that mean she lost respect or attraction for me? We have. No, not at all. And trust me on that one. So I think it does depend on your energy. You have a very high one, right? Maybe it doesn't mix well with somebody who also has a really high dominant energy. I'm not saying that's wrong because they exist for a reason, submissive people, right? But I just think for me, when it's very submissive, I don't find that as sexy. I find that annoying. But see, that, and no, and, and that makes sense. And the reason why, see, what happens is the more masculine you are, the more you want the woman to be submissive. The more dominant she is, then the more. I don't know. I think I'm. Submissive. I think I'm pretty fucking masculine, dude. No, and I don't want somebody saying, that submissive. I'm saying that, I'm saying that in that moment, you're in your feminine. But go ahead. If you and your wife have like a conversation about a disagreement, and then you guys like. A healthy conversation and then she ends up being right in the situation would you consider her dominating me no i consider her right so I'm saying, I'm what's saying. your definition of like dominant like like you always have to be right and no no it's not about right or wrong it's about who's running the show so by her being right is that not her right? no that's just her being right in that conversation yeah a good a good leader would allow someone else to be right a good leader doesn't have to be right he wants the team to win in fact, I'd call a man insecure if he wouldn't allow a woman to be right on the, on the subject she was clearly right. I like that. I do like that. And, you know, it goes back to the question of, like, what do you find more attractive? Because that's what we're talking about. Yeah, it's a, a preference. It's a preference. It's a preference. It's a preference. It's a preference. I agree. One of the things you said is, like, when you and your partner or girlfriend get into something and it's, like, a little heated, like, I get off on that. Me, I totally don't get off on that. Like, I need, I don't need any back talk. I don't need any lip. I don't need any attitude. I need, it's my way or the highway. Like, I don't want none of it. I didn't even have a conversation right. in the first place right, about the disagreement. You're not having no, no, that no, no, conversation. No, 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 no. So you're just avoiding any challenge. You don't have to be challenged. That's okay, like, no, no back talk. I'm right. right. That's a different thing. If we're talking, if we're, if we're talking about a topic and she's right about the topic, that's just how no, I'm talking about the topic. an opinion of yours or things that No, I'm talking about. disagrees with. If you're like an opinion, you're saying you want no back. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about opinions. I'm talking about decisions. So, so we can have a conversation about a topic, but when it comes to a decision, the final decision is mine. Let me change my word. <laughs> if you were to have a healthy discussion about a decision, which she disagrees. She says, I disagree. Right. She says, so if we say, hey, we want to do, she wants to do A, B, and C. And I say, no, I want to do D, E, and F, right? We're, doing that. We're, we're doing D, E, and F at the end of the day. Now, I'll, I will listen to what she says. And if I, if I think A, B, and C sounds better, then I say, okay, yeah, let's do A, B, and C. Because that sounds better. But you don't talk in the first place. No, no, no. Is that's even no, in the conversation? No, that's, that's what I'm saying. If we're having a conversation, that's cool. I'm saying the final decision, though, is mine. So, so you can speak your mind, but at the end of the day, I'm making the final decision. So it's like, I'm going to let you right. talk. Yeah, I'll let like, you talk, yes. At, in the end, I don't really care. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do what I want. No, but no, I said, no, I, said I care. I, I, do, I do want to touch upon the... Is one more thing with, like, like let's, let's clarify submissive. Let's not get that mistaken between incompetent. Like, oh. submissive does not mean incompetent. And I think you might have been talking about women that could be incompetent, where they don't have the capacity to take care of themselves at all or make any type of decision. 
So I think there's definitely a difference in how she shows up in the relationship compared to being able to make decisions in her everyday life. Sure, but he doesn't want them to make decisions. No, no, I didn't say I didn't want them to make decisions. I'll say this. No, your decision is the final, no matter what. <laughs> some, some of the strongest women in the world right now are sitting in submissive roles because they're strong enough to think for themselves and do what they feel good in their heart. Because there are women that do want to be submissive naturally. And some of those women are the strongest women in the world right now, especially when the world's telling them to go be something that they don't want to be. I do agree that honestly, it is a choice. It's a preference. You know, we shouldn't speak upon like everybody. Obviously, like it's always a gray area. It's a range. It's not. It's not one or it's not one side or, or the other. And if you guys want to be in a relationship where the woman is submissive and the woman also wants to be in a relationship where the male is dominant, that's completely fine. But the, the thing I want to talk about more is the fact that like you guys keep saying that like this is what women want or that like all women want this. Who are we to decide what women want? Because first of all, we're not women. And second, just because of our personal experiences in our lifetime about the people we, we've interacted with, I feel like that's something we need to take a step back from and clarify that like, no, this is just my personal opinion. Shut up. Just because we're not women doesn't mean we don't, we don't understand women. We understand women more than women understand men. That's the problem I have with this particular statement here, right? And women say whatever they say. This is where everybody drinks the Kool-Aid. But their actions say different. Through most of these successful men's gaze and my own gaze and most of the men in this sphere's gaze, we've seen the actions of women. It does not match with their words. Just through that alone... We know that most of them want to be submissive. Why? Because most of them are spouting. They want to be strong and independent, but yet still want a man to take care of everything. This is where the part they are missing out on the intersectional dynamic or whatever the fuck it's called of how it actually works in real life. In the end, we don't know what women want. Women knows what they want, not men. I, I have yet to see a relationship. Because I would say a relationship dynamic that is optimal has deep connection where you could say there's a deep friendship there, but also there's sexual polarity. And I've seen dynamics where there is a great friendship there and there is connection and they do live very cohesively. But when the woman is more dominant, the majority of the time, I've yet to see a dynamic where consistently over time, there is strong sexual polarity on her end in a dynamic. And that's fine. Like if that's if that's what you've seen in your lifetime, that's completely fine. Like but that, I think but then that's biology book. says that. I don't think it's just my personal opinion. I don't think, but like, probably you, you just it. surround yourself with. Yeah, yeah that's just saying. It's like just because you've grown up in a certain area yeah, where like people are like that, because like I could say the same thing, but on the other side, where I've seen plenty of people and plenty of relationships where, like. That wasn't the case, but then they're like sexually fine, you know, that like they're perfectly fine. Their polarity is completely fine and they're happy. And I could say the same thing. I could keep going at you saying that like, oh, because of what I've seen or what I've, ex I've experienced, dominant men, it won't work. But then that's dumb because there are cases where dominant women do work, but there's also cases where it doesn't. No, it's all, it's when all, they're it's happy, all correct. See, see, they're on the nuance. They're literally on the nuance. When we say all women or most women are women, we're talking about most, not not 99, like not 100% of all women are want to be this way. Not 100% of men want to be dominant, just like this. To speak on the nuances and think to take away the 80% of all women saying that they don't want to do this is wrong. Because majority of women do want this particular dynamic. This is where I think he is wrong. Probably not going out saying, I'm so happy, I'm dominant, and I'm a woman. He's not going around saying that. You know, like, they're just happy. They stick to themselves most of the time when that happens. You know, I feel like they really ignored hypergamy. Like, women have hy are hypergamous. Because they're hypergamous in nature, of course, they're going to want more men that are highly social class, men that are more dominant, men that are more stronger, smarter than they are. So in that sense, they want someone to submit to. They want someone more superior than them. They don't want an equal. Most women do not want equals. They want someone better. Through like, Society literally proves this through all, all of media. So...